Welcome back to Fab Automotive Detailing. In this video, you guys, we're gonna take a look at this Ryobi 2300 watt inverter generator with Bluetooth. Let's do it. All right, you guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, generator. I do want to say thank you to Ryobi for sending this to me. I did not pay for this generator, you guys, um, but I did not get paid to make this video, so I always like to put that out there for you guys to know. Um, this, this generator is going to be fantastic for when we go camping. Uh, that's what we want a generator for. Eventually, I may buy a second one because I can do a parallel with these. I can put them in parallel to have two to run the air conditioning unit on the generator or on, on the generator on the camper because one by itself is not going to run the air conditioner but it'll run the refrigerator the microwave and everything else this is 2300 starting watts 1800 running watts and i'm going to just do an overview really quick on it this is your storage switch then you have your run start and then you have your cold choke right there and we're going to go we're going to put oil and everything in i haven't done any of that yet and then obviously your fuel tank is up here and it is vented on the front of the generator, you have your screen, which is a digital screen. It's gonna give you a readout of how much time you have remaining on your fuel because it's Bluetooth. Your auto idle button, two USB chargers, two 110 chargers right there. This is your parallel. If you have a parallel kit, to hook parallel up to it. And then on the side of the generator, and I'll show you guys that here in a minute, we put oil in it. We're gonna take this off to access the oil so we can uh, pour oil into it. And uh, that'll be about it. We'll get this thing running. We're going to break it in for about 30 minutes. It doesn't say to do it, does it, in the manual? No, I have the not. manual does not say. We didn't find that yet. We haven't read the whole thing. Uh, but we're going to do a 30-minute break-in on it. We just let it run for 30 minutes. And then we'll take it out to our camper. Um, and we'll hook it up to the camper. And we'll see what it will run and see how loud it is, how quiet it is. We may even put my heat gun on it because my heat gun will pull a lot of electricity. Uh, but we'll see what, what it sounds like. But being an inverter generator, it should be pretty quiet. So... Let's jump right into this video. Oh, by the way, you guys, I'm uh, glad Todd mentioned that because Todd's here. Um, it does have the carbon monoxide shut down. shut down. It will shut down if it detects too much. Um, this is obviously supposed to be run outdoors. It does come with a quick reference guide, you guys. So first time starting, it says to add the entire bottle of lubricant provided to the generator, which we I'll show you guys that here in a minute, and then just basically shows you how to go and start it, put gas in it. Um, E0 or E10, no e E15 or E85 as you see right there so i use um premium unleaded fuel that is ethanol free from the local co-op is what i use in all my small engine stuff so that's what this is going to get also so we're just going to twist this open it's really long there we go okay i'm gonna show you guys inside really quick this is my first generator. I know nothing about generators, but Todd has been uh, researching generators for a long time. He just got one, and he's really interested in how this thing works out. I'm guessing this is probably the air filter um, right there, most likely. No? Yeah, yeah, it would be. That'd yeah. be your air filter. Yeah. This is going to be the exhaust. But here is the oil port, the oil hole. We're going to fill it. Luckily, they do give a tray. I really don't have a way to show you guys, but if you take this off right here, you take these screws out, take this door off when you want to drain it out. They give you a trace so you don't leak all your oil inside the cabinet or whatever you want to call that, I guess, the housing. But your spark plug is going to be right here. This is your carburetor. This is your valve cover. It's a single it's cylinder. Fuel storage. Yep. Fuel drain. storage fuel drain right there. You just open this screw up right here. It'll drain out all the water and the fuel. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some oil in it. It says to add the entire bottle. See if there's anything on the stick to begin with. We should have some residual in there. Yep, yep. There actually is. Yep, there's always uh, left over in there. Yep. Okay. You guys can also buy a magnetic dipstick so it catches all the all the metal. All yeah, left over. So it comes with this fancy schmancy <laughs> high tech paper filter or funnel. It'll work that it doesn't work. look to me like it's going to do a whole lot, but we're going to try it because that's what came with it. Yeah, I'd get a rag. Stick it underneath there just in case that's... No faith? Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> I know how mine was. 
<laughs> Gonna put it. Oh, look at that! It's over full one now. Well, I don't really care if it's paper filter design, but it should work. Yeah. What just started? Mama's the, the uh, where's she going? Gas station. Oh. Okay, so we're putting. Oh, by the way, this is 12 ounces that they sent. This is the oil they sent. Comes with the generator. Should be 1030. Small engine. Yep, 1030. Yeah, the funnel's working just fine. Yep. It's good one time use. Yep. By the way, we did notice, uh, the hoof noticed that this handle is actually broken right here, the carry handle. And I'll show you guys here in a second. Um, I do not believe that that is Ryobi's fault in any shape or form. It would be FedEx's fault, and I'll tell you guys why in here in just a second. I'll show you why, actually. Okay, so oil's in. There you go, throw that away. We'll just put the dipstick right back in because it says to put the whole bottle in. Yeah, that's pretty easy there. So we'll put the cover back on, put some gas in it, and we'll get it started. We'll see how good it is. Most of the time, first pull. Yep, we'll I've see. seen two pulls. You've watched a lot of generator videos. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Tornadoes would do that too. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. This is going to be nice because it's going to be quiet. Mine is obnoxious, but it powers my house. So. Yeah, this won't power a house. It'll kick your face uh, on stuff though. It says to place easy start dial to the cold start. So I'm just going to go over really quick. We're going to do it in a minute. We're not doing it right this second. And then pull the starter grip until the engine runs. Allow engine to run for 15 to 30 seconds, then move easy start dial to run start position. So what I wanted to show you guys here, under my address, but if you guys notice this box, you see it's ripped in the middle. I did not do that when I opened it, and that's right where that handle was, and you see this right here? The box is destroyed. The FedEx guy, when he walked in, he went, that's what he did. So now you know why your boxes get destroyed and products get broken, because these shipping guys, have a big expensive generator and you just toss it on the floor like it's nothing. So that's, I don't blame Ryobi at all for that handle being like that. That is FedEx's fault there. Okay, you guys, so a couple things I wanna show you really quick. You can carry it a couple different ways. You got a handle there. You also have two handles on each end, like this, to pick up with two hands. And then it also has this handle in the front. You press this button, it pulls out. Nice. You can pick it up that. and you can just walk with it. So we're gonna put some gas in it here. And we're gonna fire it up. Once again, I use ethanol free gas. It's what I recommend for all small engines. See what I'm talking about that screen that's not in there? Yeah. And there's no screen to, to kind of filter the fuel in case you have something in it. I want to fill it all the way up. So I think it's a. It says to fill it an inch below the top. Inch below? Yeah. So My son read the manual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's over folk, man. <laughs> inch below. Well, it's going to be hard to judge. Do you remember what, how many gallons it said it was? 1.2. That's, I don't think it's over too much of a gallon. Okay, we're going to say. That's full right there. I'm going to get this out of the sun so we can see the screen. Okay, we're gonna go to the cold start. We're gonna let it run for 15 to 30 seconds, as it said. So we're on cold start. We're gonna see if it fires up on the first pull. If not, you know, I don't really care. How no big deal. One or two boys. Okay, boys. That's a and girl girls. there. Oh. Hey, Ashton, how many pulls is it gonna take to start it? Just guess. Just guess a number. Nine. Wait, three. three? I say two. I say one. Okay, we'll I'm see. Giving some faith here. I'm gonna pull it really easy so it doesn't start, just so you're not right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it almost did. <laughs> the fuel's probably gotta get in there still. Yep. There it is. That is really quiet. My gosh. Okay, so here's the screen. 
So with a full tank, it's got 17 hours remaining at this speed, you guys. No load on it, it's just sitting here running. Um, I saw in other videos that this handle vibrates and rattles, but this doesn't seem to be doing it, this right now, but. Um, here's your auto idle. Let's see, does it tell you if it's on? Auto idle on, so then, no, oh, I guess you, there's idle off. Now we've just dropped down six minutes and how many hours are left, or six hours, I'm sorry, how many hours are left. Yeah, with no load on it. So then we'll turn the idle, auto idle back on. It goes back up to 17 minutes. Okay, so what we're gonna do, you guys, we're gonna let this break in and uh, for about 30 minutes, and then we'll come back, we'll put a load on it, see what it sounds like, then we'll take it back to the camper and see what it does. All right, you guys, so we're, we're setting up the Bluetooth while it's running, while it's breaking in. We turned auto idle off so it'll break in uh, better. So I, I went through the app, it has these warnings and stuff, and you have to press OK. So I'm to this point, select type of inverter generators. We're gonna go with the top one, because this one has the battery on the front. So we got this one. Make sure it's in the run restart position, which it is, obviously it's running. And then it says, press and hold button locate on the bottom of the gen, gen control LCD display on your inverter generator until the pairing mode screen re or appears. Tap to pair. So, that would be this button right here. Okay. Warning, generator is connected. Make sure your generator is 20 feet away from windows and doors. It says we have 11 hours and two minutes left. As you see, this says we have 11 hours and two minutes left. It gives me my fuel, how much fuel I've got left. I can stop the engine right here. You can't start it, but I can stop the engine right here. Um, and then time left until shutdown. Looks like you can pick a time when you want it to shut down. And this is gonna be the load level. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead, put on auto idle. We're gonna put a little bit of a load on it, a minimum load. What I'm gonna do, I have, this is a 1500 watt heat gun and it's got a high and a low setting. So, so we're gonna go on a low setting here and see what it sounds like. You can hear it went up. The load level has, there you go. I would say it's about 60%, would you say? Because it's not all the way to 100%. It also shows you on your screen down here, your load level, and now we have eight hours remaining. So that's pretty cool, and then I can stop it with this also, which I'm not gonna do because we're still breaking it in. Um, but that is, that is very cool, so I can shut it off, and it should, it goes back to auto idle. That's so quiet, so yeah, we're gonna continue the breaking process. All right, you guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to choke this out with its own box to make sure the carbon monoxide uh, sensor does work. We're just gonna put it because it has carbon monoxide detect, so it should shut it off, hopefully quickly, because this should suffocate it to make it smell the carbon monoxide. So we're gonna go ahead and put it over there right now and see what it does. See how long it takes. We'll see if my phone shows anything also. Oh, it just shut off. I got 16 seconds. 16 seconds once we suffocated it. Now it says light. lost communication. Now my phone didn't tell me anything about carbon monoxide. Now there should be, yep, there's a red LED. Right there, letting us know that there's an issue with the carbon monoxide. So that should reset on its own after a little while. And that's about it for testing here in the driveway. We're gonna take it over to the camper next and hook it up and see what it does. All right, you guys, so we're out here. We're getting ready to hook up the camper, but one thing I wanna show really quick, we're gonna see if it works. This is the engine stop button. Right here, we'll see if it stops the generator. Do you wish to shut down your inverter generator? Yes or no? Yes. Press and hold. Press and hold. Yeah, I gotta read it. Generator just shut down. So that is such a cool, such a cool little thing. All right, you guys. So here's the camper. Todd's gonna be the cameraman for just a minute. This is our 2021 Bullet Crossfire camper we bought last year. Um, we have it hooked up to the. We don't have the generator hooked up to it yet. But this is a connection for 110 to 125 volt, and then your Hertz and all that. I don't know all that stuff, but it's a 30 amp, 125 volt, as you can see right here, is what that is. And what that'll do, that'll actually light up blue if we have power once we turn the generator on. So nothing in the camper is on right now. 
Junior, would you mind being a cameraman? Nothing is on the camper right now, but we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna plug this in. It automatically went up. Hit something. Yeah. Well, the radio has power. I wanna show you guys something. Come on over here, buddy. Where my mom's at. I'll show everybody the battery's disconnected. Positive's on, but the negative's not, because here's the negative right here to show you. And it's not hooked up to my truck. So there's no power for my truck doing anything either, as you can see. But we'll see if this blue light is on. That'll show me if I have a good connection. Can you see it? Get down in my hand. See the blue light is on right there? That means it is working. So let's go inside. From right here, I think it's so quiet. It's quiet. Just listen to it. <laughs> you can take a nap to anything. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we'll come on in here. So obviously there's no power because uh, I'm battery's disconnected, so we'll see if we have lights. We got lights as you can see. Lights are on. The Did the generator turn up? No, open that window up. Let's open this window so we can hear. Okay. Go ahead and just sit right there, buddy. He's just gonna sit so you guys can hear with the microphone. Okay, we're gonna turn this fan on. Oh, I don't know if the generator went up, but it's working. Light is on. Okay, let's turn the microwave on. Let's just do 10 seconds. Just hit one. Let's just hit a one. No. Oh, it's not a automatic. Oh, it's Show the microwave's working. Did the it's, generator go up? Yep, it's going up. Generator picked up, but as you can see, it's working. And I can show you. No, it just went down. Generator just went down, but as you can see, let's just do it again. Let's do 10 seconds. You'll see this meter go up. Yep, there it is. So the microwave's running. I heard, I heard it dip down. Okay. Now the other test that we have that we can do with this is the refrigerator's gas or propane and electric, okay? So, but it, if it being on, if you want it in gas, you turn that out, push that out, but we're gonna keep that in. We'll turn this on and it should turn on because the gas isn't even on anyways. And it should. It's gonna take a minute for it. Yeah, it's gonna take a second for it to kick on, but we'll sit here and we'll watch it. But it should turn on here in just a second, because, nope. It's ramping up. Okay. I it's, hear it. Yep, it's going up. That might be all it is, because refrigerators don't take a lot. Okay. They just take a lot to start, and that's it. Your surge watts is what. Okay, so last thing we're going to check. I'm going to turn that back off. Oh, yeah. Let's turn it back off, because we don't need. Nope, and the generator just went back up as soon as I hit that button. Last thing, well, we obviously know we probably have a radio because that doesn't take much power anyways. One ten point three, because <laughs> down in Madison where we were at, didn't have any radio. The next test, you guys, though, is we're gonna do this air conditioning. Now, you really need a parallel to run the air conditioner. It's a thirteen thousand five hundred BTU. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to start the air conditioner. But Todd says we should turn the fan on first just yep. to see. And then, well, well, the problem is you can't on ours. You either have fan or air condition. Does it go either way? Can you it, turn these knobs you, either way? Well, you either have fan or air conditioned fan. Okay. So there is no fan, then start the air condition is what I'm saying. Turn it on, yeah. So what we're gonna do, let me put my phone on here. We're gonna, this is just hot and cold. Okay. How cold it's gonna be. We're gonna turn the air condition on, but it's probably gonna stall it out. We'll see if it turns on. when you're hearing is the refrigerator. is a brand new air conditioner maybe they're way more energy efficient That's what I was they had of course it doesn't feel cold oh yeah it does go right here that's cold but it's not warm out it's not really hot outside yeah, right but it really should still
turn the refrigerator on too, just to see. Now we drive down to 11 hours. Plenty of time to sleep with air conditioning on. Oh, that, I can't tell if that's air conditioned though. It doesn't feel like it is. I just don't think that. It does? It feels like outside air, doesn't right. it? See if the air conditioner's running outside. You should be able to tell. You should be able to hear it on top of the camper. Uh, nine hours left now. It may have just turned on. Can you hear it? I think it might be on, you guys. I can't tell, though. It may. Did you turn a breaker off for it? We're gonna see if we tripped a breaker. They're all on, so. Oh, that's the microwave. Yeah, the air conditioner's not working. Let's see something. Watch. It ran. Oh, there it went. okay. There it went. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. It just went into overload protection, you guys. So we had the refrigerator, the blower, and the and the micro and the microwave going. And it went in, so we should have a light on out here. Let's go see. And it says on my phone, it says system overload. Inverter is overloaded. Remove load and press reset button on the next screen. Oh, hang on. Okay. Okay, I can reset it from my phone. Reset. Okay, it just oh okay, that's cool. Yep. Don't even have to get out of the camper. Right. <laughs> right. That's awesome right yeah. there, man. <laughs> okay, you guys, so what I want to do, I'm going to close this window. And I'm going to have Todd turn the air, condi er, air condition, the microwave on because the air conditioner's too loud. You won't be able to hear it. And let's hear what the generator sounds like with the window shut. And everybody be quiet. I don't know how to use a microwave. I mean, you can barely hear the generator running, you guys. Show sure, your anything. Barely run, it's 100% right now. But you can barely hear it out there, so it's not gonna drive the other campers crazy. That is so cool, you guys. All right, you guys, so as you saw right there, this thing worked great on the camper, um, and which is my whole goal of using this. Um, we, I, have, I did try it on like a heat gun and stuff like that. It worked great, um, but the camper was the whole purpose of me making the video on this, was using it on the camper. Now, me and uh, Todd started talking about after the video that the air condition felt cold, but it didn't, they're cool, but it didn't feel really cold. So we're kind of wondering if the air conditioner was actually turning on. We heard it clicking. We got the ladder. We could hear it clicking. We could hear it running. We don't know if we heard the blower running or the actual compressor. We got in the manual for the air conditioner on the camper, and it says to not run it below 65 degrees Fahrenheit exterior temperature, ambient temperature. And it was only about 60, so we're wondering if it was even on because it wasn't putting much of a load on. It should have been because it's 1,500 watts on that is what the running watts are. So it should have put about an 80% load on this. So I'm gonna test it again in the future, but as far as this video, I don't have time to do it again. Um, I need to get this video out for you guys. But but this this thing is, is fantastic and it's so quiet. I, the microphone is gonna make it sound loud. I already know because I, I took a video with my phone and when I watched it back, I was like, holy cow, that is way louder on the phone than it is in person. In person, I'm telling you, it is so quiet. We can stand there and talk next to it. And it's like it was barely even on underneath of us. Um, we had we had a four-wheeler run on my daughter's four-wheeler we parked the four-wheeler next to it at idle and the four-wheeler was way louder than this uh, it's just crazy how quiet this thing is and even if you turn the idle off it gets a little bit louder but still it's still quiet enough that you can still have a conversation around it i really like this screen right here it's very clear it's very crisp and when you have it on your phone you can watch your phone and it's exactly whatever your screen right here is showing you have your USB chargers here, your idle down button, your 110s here, your parallel. This is your carbon monoxide monitor I showed you earlier. It flashes and it does work. The sensor in it works great. As you saw, we, we uh, suffocated it with the box and it shut down after 16 seconds, if I remember correctly. And then the handle, I saw in the videos where when this thing was running, this handle was rattling. They must have done something because this one does not rattle. And this one, I haven't done anything to it at all. I love the Bluetooth technology that it has that I can shut it down with it. I can look at my hours on my phone of how many hours this generator has been running so I remember when it changed the oil on it. Um, just all around, fantastic. I, I think it weighs about 30 pounds, which isn't too terrible if you need to get it down out of your truck, but then you got wheels on it. You can pull it like a suitcase. So 
they thought of a lot of awesome things on this um, this machine. I think my only drawback to this machine would be there's no screen here for the fuel um, in case you have crap in your gas can and you can get that down your carburetor which you obviously don't want to do. But then the other one which isn't a big deal by any means. I have nothing that's a big deal. This, I wish this was a quick disconnect here because I swear man you're sitting there doing this forever to get that off of there. Other than that they gave you access to drain your oil which is always an awesome thing because you're not filling up the inside uh, with your dirty oil. Um, they give you ability to drain your, your your carburetor bowl, which I did. I took this off, undid the screw, drained the carburetor bowl. The fuel switch is in the off position. Once it was done draining, I tightened it back up, ready to go. Now, every now and then, uh, once or twice a month, I'll start up. I'll let it run for a little bit, put a load on it for a little bit, just to keep it, keep it fresh, you know, um, and then just set aside till we go camping the next time. But this is a fantastic fantastic generator it's the first one i've ever owned but it's awesome and todd's done a lot of research and he has said this is actually one of the best ones that he's looked at also as far as inverter generators you guys so i want to say thank you again to ryobi for sending this to me i do really appreciate that and if you guys like this video give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button join the fab family we'd love to have you we'll see you in the next video